Suppose we have four vessels. Each vessel has a volume of 10 liter. In first vessel, I put 44 grams of carbon dioxide. In second vessel, I take 18 grams of water vapor. In third vessel, I take 35.5 grams of chlorine gas. And in the fourth vessel, I take 17 grams of ammonia. My question is, which vessel has the least active mass of the substance? Whose molar concentration is the minimum over here? The answer is, minimum active mass out of the four. If we calculate active mass everywhere, we find that here it is 44 upon 44 into 10. It becomes 0.1 mole per liter. So is the case over here, 18 upon 18, because 18 is the molecular weight of water. So 18 upon 18 into 10, it again becomes 0.1 mole per liter. In the fourth vessel, 17 upon 17 into 10, again it becomes 0.1 mole per liter. But if you look into the third vessel, which contains 35.5 grams of chlorine, the active mass of chlorine here is 35.5 upon 71. Remember, 35.5 is the atomic weight of chlorine. Its molecular weight is 71. So 35.5 upon 71 into 10, this is not 0.1, it's 0 0.05 mole per liter or we write as capital M, that is the symbol for mole per liter. So active mass of chlorine is the least in this question. That becomes our answer. So that way we can calculate active mass of any substance in the solution phase, any substance in the gaseous phase. But remember, there is a very, very important point to be noted here. What is the active mass of a pure solid or a pure liquid? The very important point is active mass of a pure solid or pure liquid is taken to be taken to be equal to unity. Don't say that active mass of a pure solid or pure liquid is a unity. Now, every solid, every liquid has its own concentration in terms of mole per liter. But since concentration or active mass of a pure solid or pure liquid remains constant during the course of the chemical reaction, therefore, for the sake of convenience, it is taken to be equal to unity. The mathematical formulation of law of mass action. For this, consider a homogeneous reversible reaction like M1A plus M2B equal to N1C plus N2D. Then according to the statement of law of mass section, we can say that rate of forward reaction is proportional to the product of the active masses of the reactants. That is, RF is proportional to A to the power M1 into B to the power M2. And similarly, we can write rate of backward reaction is proportional to active mass of C raised to power N1 and active mass of D raised to power N2. Converting proportionality into equation, we can write Rf equal to Kf into A to the power M1 into B to the power M2. And similarly, Rb equal to Kb into C to the power N1 into d to the power n2, where kf and kb, these two are constants known as rate constants. f stands for forward and b stands for backward. So this is rate constant for forward reaction and this is rate constant for the backward reaction. Further, since at equilibrium, we know 
rate of forward reaction is equal to rate of backward reaction. Therefore, we can write Kf into A to the power m1 into B to the power m2 equal to Kb into C to the power n1 into D to the power n2. Or we can write Kf upon Kb is equal to C to the power n1 into D to the power n2 over A to the power m1 into B to the power m2. Now, this ratio of the two rate constants, mind it, it is not the ratio of the rates, it is the ratio of the rate constants. This ratio of the two constants is another constant and that we write as K or equilibrium constant. So, K is equal to Kf upon Kb and that is equal to C to the power n1 into d to the power n2 over a to the power m1 into b to the power m2. So, equilibrium constant for any reaction can be written in the form, in this type of format. Let us consider one simple example. So, we have this reaction n2 plus 3 H2 equal to 2 NH3. Again, this is a gaseous reaction, homogeneous, reversible gaseous reaction. Then equilibrium constant for this reaction would be written as active mass of ammonia, square of it, because its stoichiometric coefficient is 2, and upon active mass of nitrogen into active mass of hydrogen raised to power 3, because the stoichiometric coefficient of hydrogen in the balanced equation is 3. So, that way equilibrium constant for any reaction can be formulated.